guys. So today we're going to be talking about different types of skulls. So we're going to start with carnivores. And I gave you um, this piece of paper here that talks about the different things that you need to look at to classify the skulls. That is everything from the length of the skull in centimeters. So we're going to measure that. And then it talks about where the form of magnum is located. Um, their peripheral vision, are their eyes are in the front of their head or are they at the sides? So we're going to look at that. And then it talks about the size of their canines. Um, or do they have large incisors, or the are they do they have grinding molars or sharp molars? And then um, we are going to look at this sagittal crest on the top of their head to see if they have a large one of those. And then um, their turbinates. The turbinates determine if they have a very good sense of smell. The more complex the turbinates, the more that they have a good sense of smell. So we're going to look at all that. And that is in this document here that is from Cornell Institute for Biology Teachers. So I attached that in Google Classroom. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you are going to measure. So we're going to start with, um, I'm going to start with a raccoon. How's that sound? And you can infer, do you think it's a carnivore? Do you think it's an omnivore or herbivore? What do you think? You can infer that. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to measure it because that's fun. So here's what it looks like. Can you see it? Okay, so you are going to, if you're in person, you are going to put this ruler down like this. You're going to measure it in centimeters. You're going to measure it from the tip of the snout like that, okay? But don't hold it up because you'll drop it. And then if you want to use a piece of paper to help you, and you can see this raccoon is 120, or it's 12 centimeters, 120 millimeters. So it would be 12 centimeters is what you would write down, All right? So I talked about that form of magnum. See that hole right here? This is a hole right there, and that is where your spinal cord would go through, um, because the hole connects the spine that allows the spinal cord to connect to the brain. Okay, so if it goes like this, then you know that oh, okay, obviously it has to walk on four legs, um, because it wouldn't be able to walk straight up. I mean, your head would if it's straight up and down, your head would go way out. Like our form of magnum, humans are in the middle, like right there, and we walk up two legs. But all the animals we're talking about today walk on four legs. So I'm just going to show it to you because you can see the size of it and stuff like that. Okay, so now we're going to look at the eye sockets. So are they in the front or are they at the side? So if we're going to look here, you can see these eye sockets here. Over here, see them? They're forward facing. So that's uh, indicative of predators. Predators have forward facing eyes. All right, and um, raccoons, let's look at their teeth. So we'll see, are they really predators? Or are they anomaly? Um, so we... The eyes are forward facing. The second thing we're going to look at, look at is the shape of the canines. So, this is the mandible. The mandible is the movable jaw. See, uh, the maxilla is this top one. That's the immovable jaw. Even on ours, this is our mandible. See how I move it when I talk? Oh, 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 oh. This one doesn't move. That's the maxilla. Okay, so we're just going to look at the mandible for a second. These are the canines right here. But do you think they're sharp or do you think they're dull? Sharp. They're sharp, very good. Now, look at these molars. Do you think the molars are sharp? Or do you think they're dull? If you're like, I don't know. Let's look. Let's look at something that we know has dull molars. Can you see that? See how they're flat? Those are dull, those are flat grinding molars. I'm not going to tell you what animal that is. Um, so these have sharp canines and sharp molars. And, oh, actually, the molars in the back are kind of flat. So if you want to say that they're they're starting to be grinding, but they're pretty sharp still. Um, so you can say grinding molars if you wanted to for the raccoon. See how they're more flat? But they have sharp canines and sharp incisors. Oh, uh, they're turbinates. Turbinates. Look at that. See that in there? Those are simple. They're not, they're simple turbinates. Their eye sockets are actually pretty small compared to what they could be. So I'm going to say they have small eye sockets. And look at, look at their sagittal crust. Okay, so... Sagittal crest is on the top here. We have a tiny, a tiny one. And what the sagittal crest does is that allows for muscles to attach so that it can bite really hard into flesh. So do you think predators have that? Yes, the more predator they are, the stronger their jaw, the stronger or the more intense their sagittal crest. So they have a medium sagittal crest, raccoons do. And they have a small snout. All right. So now what do you think a raccoon is? Do you think it is a carnivore? Or an omnivore. Because remember they have their molars are kind of grinding in the back. They have um, small eyes. They have a simple 
turbinates. I'll tell you at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna make you watch the whole movie, but I'm gonna see if you can figure it out. The whole movie. Oh my goodness. All right, the next one we're gonna look at is an. I think we're gonna do an off. Oh, did you want to see a vacuum pill? I'm sure you've all seen a vacuum before. I'm a little bit by your garbage can. Here's a raccoon pelt. See how they had like the bandana uh, around their eyes, this bandit, and they also had the striped hat. You can make it into a hat with striped tail. So this would be an example of a raccoon pelt. Okay. Right. Now we're going to go. So the raccoon one is done, except you have to figure out if it's an omnivore, carnivore, or herbivore. You have to classify that. All right. So the next one we're going to do is an otter right there. We said the raccoon was 12 centimeters. Uh, let's check this otter here. There's that otter. It is 10 and a 11. It is 11 centimeters. So the raccoon was 12. The otter is 11. All right, let's look at that form of magnum. See, that's also on the back. So if you put a pencil in it, you can see it has four legs. Let's look at their teeth. Look at those hungers. Those canines, these are the canines right here. Are they sharp or are they dull? They are sharp, very good. So look at the molars here. These are also sharp molars. You can see that it's a little bit sharper than the raccoons that were grinding molars. Um, They have medium eye sockets. Oh, are their eye sockets forward facing or on the, on the sides? I forgot that one. They're forward facing eye sockets and they're medium sized. And then they have, see, I don't know, it's, it's what, oh, you can kind of see it. That's medium sagittal crest, like glares. So, all right, they have forward-facing eyes. They have medium-sized eye sockets. They have very sharp canines, sharp molars, and they have a medium set, um, sagittal crest. You think they're predators? Yes, obviously they're predators, right? But do you think they're carnivores? Because you can be a predator and a carnivore, and you can be a predator and an omnivore. Because if you, I just assumed you knew what an omnivore was. An omnivore can eat both plants and animals. A carnivore can only eat animals, and an herbivore only eats plants. So these are, which one do you think? Carnivores, omnivores, or herbivores? Again, I'll tell you the answer at the end. I wish you could touch this. Oh, it's here. Look at that. Oh my gosh. This is, they used to make hats and coats and stuff out of otters. They actually almost became extinct when they had the fur trapping days. And the reason why they didn't, they were keystone species. And then the sea otters, what they did is they ended up, this is a river otter, but the sea otters, they ended up, um, they eat sea urchins. And then when they killed them all off, the sea urchins overpopulated, killed the kelp beds with the no kelp beds, and the fish had no place to spawn. So then the fishermen are like, dude, stop killing otters because I need to make a living and sell fish. So that's kind of cool that they're not extinct anymore. This is the sea otter. Hey, mom, he has, he's so long he doesn't even fit on the computer screen. This is like an unfed tent. Look at that. This is very long. This is a river otter. It's so soft. Right? Carnivore, omnivore, herbivore. You have to figure that out. Okay, now we're going to do a skunk. He, you, you Google skunks, they don't talk to, um, all you can really Google about is, you know, okay, this is a skunk, uh, you want to see what this is? We got a sample of something here, so yeah, that's what their poop looks like, <laughs> we actually learned about poop, um, after this unit, we read an article about it, these are their little baby tracks, can you see that, oh, another bee, another claws. The hind tracks. Okay, let's measure it. Let's get on task here. All right, so again, you hold the ruler up. See that? These are, if I hold my paper, do to curl, seven centimeters. Seven. All right, got that written down? All right, now let's look at it. Let's analyze. See this one? It's a lot smaller because the other ones were 12 and 11. Okay, let's look at their canines. They do have sharp canines. Can you see them? They're pretty sharp right there. All right, so the skunk has sharp canines. They have sharp molars. Can you see those in the back there? The molars are pretty sharp too. Okay, let's look at their eyes. Their eyes are forward facing. They have small eye sockets. Look up, look up their nose. See any boogers? See how complex that turbinates are? With all those little curly cues. Those turbinates are complex. So forward facing eyes, sharp canines, sharp molars. 
complex turbinates, small eye socks and sockets. And then look at their, their sagittal crest right there. See that? That is, can you see it? There it is. Now you can see it. So they have muscles attaching to that to help them to bite down on things. So they have a medium sagittal crest and then their snout. Look how tiny their snout is. Obviously they have a small snout. So they're predators because they have forward-facing eyes and all that stuff. But are they omnivores, carnivores, or herbivores? Again, I'll tell you at the end. All right. Let's go on to let's do a tiny baby one. We haven't done before. Oh, did you want to see a skunk pelt? There it is. Look at that. See the two traditional stripes? There's different types of skunks. Some are spotted. Some are striped. This one's obviously a striped skunk. So you can see that. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty fancy. Pretty fancy. Okay, so we're going to do the muskrat. We have lots of muskrats by us. All right. Muskrat. Muskrat. Ooh, look at that. They're orange. Orange teeth are a classification of rodents, if you didn't know that. And a lot of... They grow their whole lives, so they have to gnaw. So those are not canines. Those are called incisors in the orange. Those are incisors, okay? So they do not have large canines. They have large incisors. Look at their teeth. Look at their grinding molars. I can't open this because it's super glued shut. But um, those are grinding molars. See how they're completely flat? So they, um, their eyes see, their eyes are on the sides of their head. See how it's way over here versus like this raccoon that it's in the front. So their eyes are on the sides of their head. They have very large incisors. They have grinding molars. They have small eye sockets. And they have zero sagittal crest. There's nothing there. Okay, so do you think these are predators or prey? When the eyes are on the sides of their head, they're usually there so they can see their peripheral vision. The reason why they're like that is because they need to see the prey or predators coming toward at them. So their eyes are over here on the sides, then they can see this whole range and see who's coming to eat them. All right, that's indicative of prey. So preys usually have our eyes on the sides of their heads. Predators. They need to go forward, right? They need to go and catch that prey. So then their eyes are forward facing so they can see where's that prey? Where is my food? And then they can take it down. Okay, so do you think these are herbivores, omnivores, or carnivores? Did you want to see some muskrat tracks? I'll do two more, okay? That's a muskrat track. Totally different than the skunk, but because muskrat live near water. They built their muskrat houses on water, whereas skunks don't live, they live in like the forest and stuff. All right, let's do this one because it's ginormous. Look at it, it's kind of broken. You know what this is? Again, look at those incisors. One of them broke. He chipped his tooth. I'm going to measure him. See how big this dude is? 15.5 centimeters, large and in charge. So this is obviously classified as a rodent as well because it has these orange teeth. So this has eyes on the sides of its head, which you can see over here. See that? It has specialized incisors. They're orange. It has grinding molars. Can I open this one? See? There you go. Now you can see those molars. See how they're flat? Those are grinding molars. They're flat. They grind their plant matter. They have simple turbinates. You can see that? There's not, they're not very complex like that other one I showed you. They have small eye sockets, and they also don't have a sagittal crest. Top. And they have a short spot. So what do you think these eat? If they have large incisors and grinding molars, what do you think they eat? Do you think they shred meat, or do you think they grind plant matter? All right, I'll tell you the answer in a bit. All right, last one for now. Here it is. Look at this one. What do you think that is a vampire? It's not. It's not a vampire. Right. Oh, I've been forgetting to show you the phone on Magna. So neat. Here it is back there. Stick that pencil in right there on the beaver. Did I tell you this was a beaver? I don't remember, but this is a beaver. This big, huge thing. It's a beaver. We'll go back to that beaver. And we'll show you this beaver pelt. It's so soft. They also made... Um, Colts out of this because beavers live in the water, right? So they have to be well insulated. Otherwise, they'll be cold all the time and then they'll freeze. So he has this big, huge, thick coat. There's no tail on this. But look at oh, it's so soft. And then um, I also brought you the muskrat. 
So there's a little muskrat. He's living in those muskrat huts. If you drive in between Wisconsin and Minnesota and you see all those muskrat huts on the Mississippi River, the backwaters of Mississippi, I should say, um, he's a little spurs. There's a muskrat. He's also soft. Okay, sorry about that. Now we're back to this bobcat. This is the bobcat. Forward facing eyes. He has large eye sockets. Look how ginormous those are compared to the other animals we've been talking about. These are his canines. Do you think they're sharp? I would think so. So large canines. Okay. Can you see that? How did I have that in there? There we go. Large canines. Look at those molars. See, those are very, very large as well. So what do you think they do? Do you think they grind plant matter or do you think they sh rip and shred flesh? Because they don't have forks and knives. They have to rip it with their teeth. So they have forward facing eyes. They have sharp canines. Sharp molars. However, though, they have simple turbinates. Large eye sockets. You can see their sagittal crest there. Can you see that? Right there. You have a slight one. It's small. And a short snout. These are obviously predators. Predators, remember, have forward-facing eyes, large canines. Um, but are they carnivores, omnivores, or herbivores? All right, so I'm going to go back and give you the answers. We didn't do the make. I wanted to do the make. What happened here? I'm going to have to do him on the next, the next video when we talk about this. Okay, so let's go back. Raccoons are... Maybe I should just let you figure it out. I'm going to let you figure it out. All right, so we will do, on the next section, we will do coyotes, mink, fox, and buckets. All right, so we are going to talk about that mink I keep telling you about. So here's the mink, okay? Here's the formal magnum, which is in the back. He is six centimeters, all right? You can see the canines in the front. See those? See the molars in the back? So they have eyes on the side of their head. Their canines, I mean, they're not super tiny, but they're not super sharp. Remember these dudes? Look at those. Those are large canines. These are medium, medium-sized canines. They have grinding molars. They have small eye sockets. And they have no sagittal crest on the top. It looks like it, but it's just dirty. You can see the formal magnum. And they're super soft. There's a, there's a mink. We use these to make mink fur coats because they're so soft. Since these have the eyes on the sides of their head, they're obviously called prey. Okay, Because forward-facing eyes, they're predators. Eyes on the sides of the head, they're prey. So you have to figure out what mink eat. All right, we are going to jump to a fox. Here is my mandible of my fox. Look at those grinding. Grinding. Are they grinding or are they sharp? Look at those molars. Look at the canine. Look at that. Look how sharp all that stuff is. This is a fox. Don't drop it. You could break it. You have a large snout or long snout. Okay, so they have four facing eyes. They have sharp canines, which you figured out, I'm sure. Sharp molars. Large eye sockets. Look there's turbinates. Look how complex they are. Is that in there? A turbinate, remember, is in the nose. That's what I'm pointing at, is inside the nose. It's got all those little things. That means it can smell really well. It has this slight sagittal crest. Can you see that? Look at that. So the muscles attached to there to attach to their jaw to help them to eat. So do you think this is a carnivore? Or an omnivore? Or an herbivore? What do you think? All right. And then I have the one I've been saving. This beast. I measure the fox. The fox is 14 centimeters. This one here is 19.5 centimeters. It's ginormous. Okay, form them, back of the head. That's where the spinal cord would go. Look at those canines. They're obviously sharp. Look at the molars, super sharp. Okay. Eye sockets are facing forward. So let's start over. Forward facing eyes, sharp canines, sharp molars, large eye sockets. They have that sagittal crest. Look at that sagittal crest up there. See that? That is what those muscles attach to. So if you go and eat, it's 
prey. So is it a carnivore? Omnivore or herbivore? Forward facing eyes, you know it's a predator. Okay. Large canines, you know it's a predator. Large sagittal crest, you know it's a predator. Predators usually eat meat. Very good. Okay, I'm gonna do one two more. We have this little baby here. What do you think this is? Orange cheese. That's um a huge sign that it is a herbivore. Look at those grinding molars. See that? It's got a little glue on them. Looks like it broke. Incisors. All right. Um, side facing eyes. Side facing eyes are prey. If you remember, so eyes are on the side of the head. It doesn't have canines. It has these large incisors. Oops, sorry. These large orange incisors. Grinding molars. Can you see up its nose? Small turbinates. Small eye sockets. No sagittal crest. See that? Look how flat that is up there. So what do you think that eats? Probably meat or plants. It is definitely prey. And the last one here side is a rabbit. Rabbit is 8 centimeters. Okay, look at those. Those are not canines. Those are incisors. Grinding molars, large incisors, side-facing eyes. They're side-facing eyes, you know they're prey. So the rabbit is a prey. It has eyes on the side of the head. It has incisors and grinding molars. There's its form of magnum, if you're wondering. Right there. Okay. It has small eye sockets. It also has no sagittal crust. So what do you think it eats? I'm going to give you a hint. If you have those large incisors, it's a herbivore. This is what their poop looks like. It's called scat. See it? Rabbit scat. This is their hind leg tracks. Isn't that cool? All right. So hopefully that gives you all the information you need. to fill out that sheet. And analyze, analyze, analyze. Don't forget. That's review. Carnivores have forward-facing eyes. They have sharp canines. They have sharp molars. They have large eye sockets, usually. Obviously, we saw a couple carnivores that had small eye sockets. They have a large to med medium sagittal crest, because that's what the muscles attach to to make them chomp down really easily. And their snout can be, depend on the species. Like that bobcat is a descendant of a cat, and they have a short snout. Coyote, descendant of a wolf or a dog, they have a long snout. And that's carnivores. Herbivores, eyes on the side of their head. They are prey. They don't have canines, or if they do, they're sh they're um, not very sharp. Um, their molars are usually grind. Or herbivores' molars are grinding molars. They have simple turbinates because they don't need to smell their food. Usually, carnivores have complex turbinates because they have to smell where their food is so they can go kill it, but not all the time. Um, herbivores have small eye sockets. They don't have a sagittal crest. And they usually have a short stump size. Omnivores, last one. They have forward facing eyes. They have sharp canines. They, their molars can be sharp or grinding depending upon the species because remember they're omnivores, so they eat plants and animals. The um, complexity of the turbinates de is determined upon the species again. Their eye sockets are usually small, their sagittal crust is usually medium. Um, so, hopefully, all this information. You can use to figure out what a skull would be that you would see on the forest floor. Would it be this one? It's a coyote. Or would it be this one? Which is a squirrel. What would it be? All right, that's 